Hey guys, it's uh, Jordan here again with the Invisible Bottle. Uh, it turns out you get lots of engagement with Invisible Bottles. It must be something to do with a very engaging thumbnail. People scrolling through and they're like, what on earth is going on there? So you might see him a little bit more often. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Guess where I am in the world, you can hang out with me for 30 minutes, doesn't even cost you. Um, you've got to be able to read English in this case. Uh, and you can read the sign behind me, especially if you're New Zealand, this should be easy enough. All you got to do is figure out what letters are missing behind my big head. Um, this week is top tips and um, common mistakes with audiobooks. So a lot of us are writing books now. A lot of the people that I'm uh, associating myself with are, are now becoming authors. They're getting the books out on hard copy and ebook, but they're not necessarily thinking about audiobooks. So I'm going to help you. Okay, um, this is part of a series, it's short, it's educational, might make you laugh, might make you cringe, whatever it is, you might get something out of it and that's good, I'm happy with that. So, there's quite a lot of tips and not a lot of mistakes, All right, um, they kind of all tie into each other. Top tips, my first one is do it, get an audiobook, do an audiobook version of your published book, okay. Um, there's lots of different reasons for this. My favorite one is that people who can't see get to absorb your content. Those of us who are lucky enough to be able to use our eyes can read books. Audiobooks are revolutionary for those of us who can't, um, So, which is awesome, and I love technology for these types of things. Um, you can get your book out there all over the place, all around the world, to a different um a different market you're appealing to a different audience okay um, you're broadening your your revenue streams so you're not limiting yourself to just the ebook just the the visual version of the book you're able to actually broaden your revenue streams and finally enough the royalties are much better with audiobooks than what they are with um, paperbacks and it costs a lot less to produce an audiobook depending on who you use but it generally costs a lot less to produce an audiobook than what it does to produce a hard copy um, do some learning top tip number two do some learning around post-production ACX is the name of the company that kind of manage all of the audiobook distribution and the quality of the of the actual audio um, they have a whole lot of requirements that you need to meet which you can meet in a um, in a home environment you can meet them in a studio you know whatever whatever your situation is you're probably going to be able to make it work but make sure you do some research on one do I want to do all this learning to figure out okay you know how am I going to make sure that it passes all the specifications so that when people hear it it sounds like all of the other books in the world so what they're trying to do is create a consistent product with a different voice so they want the background noise to be similar you know they want they don't want it to be too loud, all those sort of things, too quiet, that kind of stuff. So just understanding what all that means and, and can you actually do that yourself is is important. If you know if you don't want to do it yourself and you can't, you don't or you don't think you're gonna be able to do it on your own, then just po uh, sub out the post production. Get someone else to do it. Okay. Um, pay someone to do it. That's what I was gonna say. You can do all your awesome stuff and then you can pay someone else to do the post production. In relation to who actually voices the book, consider using a narrator. It's going to cost you. There's pros and cons. Um, they do it for a living. They're professionals at talking. So it'll cost you money, but you might actually get a, depending on how well how good you are at reading, uh, I'm questionable. I drop a lot of ums, ahs, and apparently I say okay a lot. Okay, in these videos, okay. So I would probably end up doing that subliminally in books. If you're one of those people, then maybe narration is the best, uh, getting narrated is the best option. If you're not one of those people, then why not read it out yourself, save a bit of money. And I, I like the fact that it, it, for me, it feels a little more authentic when the person who wrote the book reads the book. Um, but that might not be your superpower. And if it isn't, get somebody else on board. Um setup and consistency is important so if you're using a narrator uh they may want to do it in a studio they may be happy to do it in their home in your home whatever is kind of the best they might have a home studio that you can say hey here's the book um 
you do all the talking and then send me the files and then I'll I'll edit them or I'll pass them on to my person who does post production and they'll edit it for me, get it all ready for distribution and then maybe you manage the rest, maybe someone else manages your distribution. There's a few things to consider uh, in that sense, but make sure that you, in terms of, if you're going to record yourself, make sure your setup is really consistent and narrator will already know this. Um, a sound guy like myself will already know this, but for those of you who are thinking about recording your own, make sure one, you've got a really decent quality microphone. You could hire one, you could buy one, you could borrow one. Um, Make sure you've got a really good quality microphone, but make sure you've got a really good consistent environment where there isn't too much background noise. You know, there aren't distracting sounds, all of those kind of things. There isn't terrible echo. Um, and you can get a really quite a good quality sounding product in, in, for example, in a spare room. If you've got the spare room set up well, then it's quite a dead space and, you'll, and you actually get quite a nice sound, provided you've got reasonable equipment. You've done all this work on the book. You put all this time into your book. The last thing you want to do is not represent it well in an audio format by having a poor poor quality audio or uh, narration of that book. So things to consider in that sense. If you are going to record on your own, think about consistency of the environment. So for me, staying the same distance from the microphone the whole time. Set the microphone up in the same place. Use the same chair. Do it in the same time of day, whether it's traffic or whatever it might be. If you can, do it all in one day. Take regular breaks, do it all in one day, and get it out of the way when the nothing's changed. You'd be surprised that the ambient noise is different from day to day, even if it feels like nothing else has changed. So consistency is really important. If you're listening, you want if you're listening, maybe you guys listen to audiobooks already, you want them to be consistent. If they're all over the place, it's a little bit hard to follow the story and blah, blah, blah. Um, moving on swiftly. I've talked about considering a narrator, so do that, okay? Maybe, you, like I said, it's not your superpower, so consider a narration. Do your research into distribution platforms. Now, there's quite a lot of uh, things coming out about different um, platforms for distributing audiobooks particularly in New Zealand that you need a, a host essentially because the main company ACX is not you're not able to actually distribute through ACX from New Zealand you have to be in North America so other websites host that for you the thing is now uh, it's getting interesting with um, AI and AI actually taking your voice and using it for their own purpose without telling you and without you profiting from that which is kind of a scary thought and it's all in the fine print so make sure you read the fine print with whoever's distributing it for you if it's somebody else make sure you ask those questions okay um, if you don't care about ai being used on your voice then so be it fun fact in 15 minutes you can talk for 15 straight minutes and ai can figure out like 99% of they can use your voice for 99% of conversations in 15 minutes of words essentially so if I sat here and talk for 15 minutes AI can pretty much build an entire uh, platform based on my voice of all the 99% of the words that we use in English which blows my mind um, anyway make sure you do your research into distribution platforms read the fine print and have people you trust around you to help with that common mistakes the biggest one is not doing it okay if you're not producing an audiobook you're just missing out all right it's an upfront cost once it's done it's recurring revenue for you straight into your back pocket just like a hard copy but the, the royalties are better depending on who you're distributing with okay so again do all your research um have people in the back end helping with distribution and production who you can trust okay again what is what we'll ask those questions what is the fine print like with whatever distribution company you use if if you are using another um, producer or, or distributor on your bar, behalf make sure you're asking those questions okay um that's pretty much it just make sure you do it and if you don't do it you're missing out that's all I can really say. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, there's a few things to consider, but at the end of the day, if you're not doing it, then you're not making that revenue you could be. And 
those who of us who aren't able to use their eyes as well as we are are missing out on your content, and that sucks. Um, especially if it's something to do with learning. I worked with somebody recently who is doing um, a book on first home, first home buyers. Why should that information not be available to every single person? Okay. Remember, if it's written down, it's available to those who are hearing impaired. If it's done put with in a he- set of headphones, put them on, it's available to those who are visually impaired. So I'm a big advocate for that. That's probably my biggest message is that's why you shouldn't be not doing it, okay? Um, and until next time, you'll see me next week. Remember, guess where I am? If you want to work with me, I'm actually pretty awesome, even though this video took forever and there's a bit of the same shit said over and over, but... We don't need to talk about that and don't give me a hard time. Content's hard. This was attempt number three. Pretty stoked with that. Where am I at? Where am I in the world? Get my words right. Um, and take a guess. Say hi. And make sure that you are turning your book into an audio book. If you're not, talk to me. I'm actually pretty good at that stuff. Believe it or not. Bye-bye.